So the point of this video series is to show you how to get the most out of email. And I've spent the better part of a decade in email specifically, and I've really noticed two types of major problems that people come up against when they're new to the channel. And I like to refer to these as the top-down cascade and the bottom-up cascade. So just very quickly, I mean, the top-down cascade is actually the result of poor foundation. So your list collapses in on itself. It's things like you start seeing a drop in the amount of people interacting with your emails. After a while, they start unsubscribing. Um, soon, you just your database starts dying. The other one is the, what I call the bottom-up cascade, and it's just the rugs pulled out from under you. Uh, so things that we just briefly covered, like getting banned from a platform, um, algorithm changes, policy updates. It's mitigating these risks that stop you getting, for lack of a better term, rugged, right? To me, the lessons of both cascades are the same. You need a strategy. You need some way to make sure that you're not exposing yourself to platform risk too much. Email helps mitigate that in part, but you also need to make sure that you're managing your list in a way that you're not annoying your subscribers and going to get this top-down cascade death thing that seems to happen. This common problem people have happened with email when they're just getting started is they get really poor engagement all of a sudden. Things just start trending downwards. Um, their open rates, their clicks, uh, which aren't the most reliable indicators anymore, I understand. We'll address that later. But the, just the engagement of the list starts spiraling downwards and their unsubscribes start spiraling upwards. So the, the whole thing is dying. It's, it collapses in itself. That's why I call it top-down cascade. But it usually looks something a little bit like this. So you start off with a set of simple components. You have, you're sending some campaigns, like maybe one or two a week or maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, you have a small list of subscribers. Uh, you have this ability to add tags and custom fields. Um, of, of course, a lot of uh, EMS, email marketing services, allow you to set up automations. You might start building some of these, not really connected together in any cohesive way. But what happens it, invariably is after time, um, adding lots of these different things, they all start to add up, you know? So before you know it, you've lost full picture of how they fit together. Where it's, whether it's just something as simple as the way you're tagging your subscribers, um, the system for that. You, you don't really know where it's all going. This leads into the second thing. I mean, non-linear outsized effects. So everything becomes more connected over time and little things start having far reaching consequences. I've had things happen before, like uh, you overlook one small thing in uh, automation for cleaning your list, right? And before you know it, hundreds of subscribers have been removed. Just one small detail, just because it's connected to everything else in such a way or uh, seemingly insignificant elements ignored in a segment of subscribers that's meant to receive a very specific campaign and it gets sent to the wrong audience, right? And that's all to do with your tagging and your custom fields. Just things get complex quickly and you start getting like these outsized effects as a result of that. The final thing are these feedback loops that start to come. Um, one classic example is your, your open rates. Once they start falling, it seems to only compound on itself so that your open rates are just going to get worse and worse. And I've seen it happen to people before. So you have simple components that just become overly compl complicated. You have these outsized nonlinear effects that result of that. And then you have these kind of circular um, compounding things that just go in on each other and it can become a mess. This is actually the same thing as what uh, Professor Paul Silly is defines as a complex system. So simple components, nonlinear outsized effects and feedback loops. And I'm not saying email marketing holds a candle to anything like complexity science. Um, it's definitely not that advanced. I mean, we're just sending emails here, but at the same time, you have to appreciate that managing an email database with a lot of interacting components like this does have a certain level of complexity. And that's where these problems arise from. Look inside any reasonably sophisticated email software account and you've got to find lots of automated sequences, all spider webbing together, connected in lots of different ways, lots of processes running simultaneously. There is a degree of complexity and this is where things get away from people. So it's not so much about um, trying to avoid these things completely. It's more just about being aware that things do get a little bit complex. So without intentionally designing feedback loops from the beginning, we subject ourselves to ones that just arise naturally, right? Things just compound on themselves. 
for the outsized nonlinear effect, uh, if we don't look holistically at how our decisions are going to affect the whole system, not just like a one-off change, then we won't apply the necessary detail um, that's required to avoid that sort of thing happening. And I mean, the most common one of all is trying to design a big complex masterpiece system from scratch. It just doesn't happen. Uh, this is sometimes referred to as Gaul's law. Uh, a complex system that works is invariably found to have evolved from a simple system that worked. So I always recommend those just getting started. Just keep it simple. Instead of planning, planning a masterpiece funnel from scratch, just start with really strong fundamentals and add pieces from there as they make sense. So what really led me to finding that this is a common problem is probably due to my background as an ecologist, right? So the most classic example of a complex system is an ecosystem. You've probably heard before of the idea of an ecosystem collapse, like a oil tanker spills and uh, kills all the animals, or you remove a very specific species from a forest and then the forest dies. Like we've heard of these things happening before that uh, break down these ecosystems, these complex systems. And I mean, in ecology, they call it a, a top-down trophic cascade disaster, right? So it's the exact same mechanism that causes the top-down cascade in your email database. But I'm really not breaking new ground here. This whole idea of looking to nature, especially for complex uh, solutions, is nothing new. It's There's a long history and strong precedence of this happening. One classic example is Velcro, which you're probably all familiar with. But the story behind Velcro is that there was an engineer, this guy, George de Mestrel, he was walking in the Swiss Alps and he noticed how all the little burrs in the grass were getting stuck to his dog's fur. Uh, another example is the Japanese bullet train. So when the Japanese engineers were designing the bullet train, they found that when it just had a flat front, and it was going through tunnels it was creating a sonic boom and creating causing damage actually to the tunnel and to the train so to solve the problem they looked at the beak of the kingfisher which is a diving bird and they um, not only solved the sonic boom issue but they allowed the train to go faster and used electricity at the same time so they just looked to nature found a solution that was already working for a similar problem and just copied it right Flight is a classic one. I mean, since Leonardo da Vinci times, people have been looking to birds for how to design flying machines. I mean, even as recently as a few years ago, the University of London is looking at peregrine falcons for making more aerodynamic aeroplanes on like their wingtip feathers. This approach is sometimes called biomimicry. And I mean, there's a formal organization called the Biomimicry, biomimicry Institute. Um, they have a database of like hundreds of examples like this. But I really didn't see many people applying it to an email marketing context, which for me, it just has so many parallels with uh, ecosystem due to the factors that we were talking about earlier. And like I say in my book, I say in searching solutions to our problems, we try to invent the wheel a lot, but the most elegant solutions are right around us all the time. Stress tested, perfected by billions of years of evolution, countless generations of trial and error. Um, and they end up with solutions that are just perfectly fit for their environment. So using the biomimetic, biomimetic approach, you recognize this and you just observe what's already working in the natural world. And then you apply it to a similar problem that you're having in the, let's say, not natural world. So not only have I been able to avoid the risks that this top-down cascade causes, I've, it's also allowed me to get the most out of the channel. Really, for me, the biggest benefits have come as almost a side effect. I found that when you copy nature to build the foundations of your list, because they're so similar, it just ended up being the most effective system for growth that I could probably come across. So I've already mentioned my background a little bit, but as of recording this, there, there's versions of this system generating really millions of dollars of revenue and sales for lots of small online businesses across the US, the UK, uh, parts of Australia. So I'm really convinced that the best way to build an email marketing automation strategy is based off this idea of copying nature. And that's what the natural order system is all about. So when we talk about simple components, the system itself that we're going to be using is 
extremely simple. There's no really overly complex automations we're building. The three stages we'll cover in the following videos are themselves quite simple. And that's where you get this idea of compounding growth, simple things built on top of each other, simple building blocks, but it also allows you to see the positive nonlinear effects in your database. So we'll talk about this in the, the third part of the system. So actually identifying where your profitable customers are and being able to double down on them for expanding their lifetime value. Finally, by basing the strategy on strong engagement, retention and conversion, you make sure the system actually has feedback loops that lead to more growth instead of collapse.